Good day, Bruce Kittle, Hidden Pearls Podcast. This is a Mindful Monday uh, recorded on a Tuesday, so my apologies anyway. For those of you listening to this when it does come out, today is Halloween. So happy Halloween. I uh, got a little bit off schedule with some travels and such, so uh, apologies, but it is what it is. Um, on this Halloween day, before we jump into the meditation, so today's topic is the scariest moment, and I'm going to get to that in just a second, but I just want to shout out today, uh, Halloween day, October 31st was the birthday of my wife, Jan's father. So my father-in-law, Bub Krager, Bub Vivan Krager. Uh, Bub's been passed on now a number of years. Don't know the exact number, uh, but he loved, loved, loved his birthday and loved, loved, loved Halloween because it was a chance to celebrate his birthday. And the one thing he really loved was having his family around him and all his grandchildren and that. And for those of you who don't know, he was married to an amazing woman, Lou Jean, Lucky Lou Jean Krager, uh, who, for those of you who follow the podcast and such, celebrated her 100th birthday at a game in January uh, this past season uh, with the Niners. And so that was quite a to-do. And so Bub was, had Lou Jean, and they were married a long, long time and had 10 daughters. And so he surrounded himself with a, a bunch of women and grandchildren and children and great-great-grandchildren and all that kind of stuff. So Bub was a little American football player drafted by the St. Louis, I'm sorry, Chicago Cardinals before they moved to St. Louis. Great football player, big, hearty and man, and uh, didn't go to uh, Chicago for that option. Decided to uh, put up roots in Iowa, southeast Iowa, and farmed his whole life uh, and at the uh, Krager Girls Farm as they called it. So anyway, so today I remember and think about Bob and his passing, which was a little bit early and that kind of thing. And so today talking about the scariest moment. So the one thing that Bob, my years around him over the years being married to Jan, was uh, this notion about living life, living fully. And so it kind of triggers for me. So he was a man of he was a soft, tender, gentle man, but a giant of a man <laughs> and a hard worker. Uh, but very, very emotional and very connected to the people in his life. And so there's a quote that he made me think about. So this is by Oscar Wilde. To live is the rarest thing in the world, and most people exist, and that is all. So the scariest moment that I want to talk about isn't somebody jumping out or Dracula or Frankenstein or any of those kind of things that are going on. <clears throat> but really, the scariest moment is to get to the point in your life, depending on where you are, and to feel that you haven't truly lived. And so this scariest moment in this meditation, I just want to lift it up as a grace-filled, loving way to just examine and take a peek that are we living the life that we truly want to live? Are we living who we are called to be? Are we living out what it is with our gifts and our talents and that which we should be living out in the world? And this isn't a guilt trip in any kind of way. It's just kind of an awareness piece. Because I think that thing is the older you get, you have this appreciation of the window is closing, <laughs> so to speak. And when I think about Bob and his passing, and uh, a week ago was the 14th anniversary of my mom's passing, and she died very young. Um, uh, it just makes me really think about the things and the choices that I make. So let's take some breaths, and we're just going to sit and just, uh, just a little bit of review and just the part about being mindful uh, as we meditate is this thought and this notion of always reassessing and checking in. So being a, having this level of awareness and doing the things in our life that you know we feel called to and all that kind of stuff and how we're interacting with others. Um, but it also has this assessment piece and just kind of always checking in, like really am I being who I'm called to be? And if not, what's, what's in the way? So let's do some breath work and then we'll go from there. So with all love and grace, this is total, you know, this again, not a guilt trip in any way. So here we go. So we're going to breathe in through the nose, exhale through the mouth, nice and deep. So inhale in all of the love, grace, and everything else that you may need and want, your intentions, your thoughts for the day. And exhale out all that doesn't serve you and let it go. Let anything go. Your body holding on, any emotions that are stuck, any of that kind of stuff. So we're inhaling in. Exhale it out. Nice and loud. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Okay. Shake it loose.
There you go. So we can just settle back into our normal breath. And just check. <clears throat> kind of let yourself be fully present in your body, like right now. So if you're rushing or pushing or juggling things, just, just for right now, just set everything down. Just let it go. Just let it drop. It'll be there when we're done here in a few minutes. And feel yourself settling in from your mind into your heart. Feel your heart beating in your chest. Feel the blood pounding through your veins. Feel the air as you breathe going into your lungs. Feel it. Feel your feet on the ground being held by Mother Earth. Feel the skin on your bones, the muscles attached. Just really embody this moment so that you can be fully present. We talked about this before, that the body is always present. We're just not always aware of it, not paying attention to this moment, the moment we have, which is right, right now. So being fully present in this moment, let's take a few breaths. Being fully present with your body. Maybe saying thank you for carrying me. Thank you for holding me. Thank you for allowing me to do the things that I can do. Even if you're facing some limitations, there's your body. It's still doing what it can. It's still a gift to be alive, to breathe, to see, or to hear, or to speak, whatever it is that we can do. So filled with gratitude. Filled with gratitude. So let's do, uh, we'll do three box breaths here just to kind of deepen it just a little bit. So we're going to count up on five, hold for eight, exhale on eight. So here we go, triangle breaths. So we're inhaling. Two, three, four, five, hold. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Exhale. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Inhaling. Two, three, four, five. Let's go to six. Nice and full. Hold. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Exhale. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One more of these. We're inhaling. Two, three, four, five, six. Hold. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Exhale. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. back to your normal breath, still fully embodied, just setting down anything that may show up and just, just attached to maybe a sensation in your body. Could be how your ribs expand and you just feel that connectedness. Could be that heart beating in your chest. Could be just your breath entering and exiting your body. Just stay present, just stay there with your body, with your spirit, with your heart. And then just for a minute or two, let's turn, turn toward what in your mind, what in your life, what does it mean to truly live? 
to live, to live out who we are called to be, to live out what we desire to be. To live out all the possibilities that can be. Just maybe hold that, hold that in your mind's eye. Let the third eye just kind of surround that and lift it up like a hologram almost. As you breathe, just let it be an inspiring vision. And you, you might be right in the middle of that vision. You might already be there, which is great. And that is amazing and wonderful. And in this process, I think, too, make sure that the vision that you have for yourself isn't created by anybody else. Nothing handed down from your parents. Nothing from Aunt Myrtle, who told you what you could or couldn't do. Nothing from our culture or our society, which tells us so many things that we can't do or can't become or can't accomplish. Just let's shed all that off. Just So just double checking. This is the vision from your heart. This is the life of your dreams, your aspirations, your vision. <clears throat> no rules carried by anyone else, no limitations lifted up or left on you by someone else. To all of that, we say poo and let it fall to the sidelines. And that is part of this mindfulness process, finding out who am I, what am I about, who is it that I feel like I'm called to be. And that, that's living. That's living the life. So let us, in these final moments, just affirm that vision and celebrate that vision and just give us space, give us grace, give us freedom, give us forgiveness to move from wherever we are, maybe just one small step closer to that vision. Because every time we hold that vision in our mind's eye, every time we celebrate that vision, every time we authorize that vision and give ourselves permission and freedom to claim that vision, we're just that little bit closer. So here's on this Halloween the scariest moment, let it not be in our lives where we reach a point in our life where we haven't been who we felt like we wanted to be. Let us celebrate living fully, living freely. And you know what? I'm just going to honestly offer this, that to do so, you will no doubt lose some people in your life. You will piss some people off and you might alienate some people. But to that, I say, hoorah, celebrate living out who you are, because in your authentic moment, as you grasp with freedom and power your authentic self and live that life, others will come to rally beside you because authenticity brings genuine relationship. And that is really it. In these moments, in these troubled times that we face, there is nothing more powerful in this world than you claiming and living out your most authentic self. So on this Halloween's day, we shed off the scariest moment, knowing that we will not experience that moment because we are stepping into our th authentic self. And that is who we are called to be. So with your own breath, I celebrate you. I wish you a happy Halloween. I say good day to Bub. May you rest in peace, you big old emotional lug. We love you and we will remember you. And let us all set free the balloons and candles in our life that pull us and lift us to be that who we can be. All my love, joy, kindness, let us celebrate others and welcome them into the family.